Let's go to John chapter 1. Verses 29 and 30. That's our text for this series. The next day, he saw Jesus coming to him and said, look, the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. This is he on behalf of whom I said, after me comes a man who has a higher rank than I and has priority over me. For he existed before me. Our series is titled Ranking Revealed. Ranking Revealed. Every day we encounter the concept of ranking in real life. Whether it be in your workplace, schools, even in the greater society. People are often arranged in hierarchy that depict their rank. And this rank is based on their achievement, their accomplishments, their skills, and their status. Let's go deeper. All military all over the world operate a clear ranking structure. When you sign up to join the military today, even if you are the most handsome man, you are the most beautiful damsel. They don't make you a major general that day. But you start at the lower rank and you begin to climb the ladder. If you continue to endure the exercises, the trainings, the tests, even war, you may end up one day becoming the big dog. That you wear a military uniform and carry a military ID doesn't give you access to every military facility. You are in the military. You are already serving. But there are places in the military you cannot enter. Rank. That you are in the military does not give you access to go to the Pentagon or the DOD and say, I want a meeting with the Secretary of Defense right now. I'm one of his boys. It doesn't happen like that. But let me take it deeper. You are in the military. Your rank in the military determines your package, your entitlements. It determines your dress code. It determines where you live, whether in the barrack or in Potomac. It determines the briefings you will get. It determines the postings, the assignment you will receive. Oh, it even determines your access to weapons. Because you are in the military and you are a cook. Who we'll give you a fork and knife? Why do we have to give you a gun? Go into the kitchen and cook us some food. Just enjoy your uniform. Again, your rank in the military determines if you will have access to classified information. All of us are in the military, but all of us don't roll the same way. Can I go deeper? In the world, and you know that the world is structured in rank. For so many years of my life, I've traveled the economy. You come there, there's 1,000 people, angry people, waiting. Every one of them with eyes glued on the screen, waiting for when they call everyone to line up. But since I began to fly, I've always noticed that on the other side, with a red carpet, with some 
partitioning on the side. I noticed that there's just a few number of people there. Could go from number one to 40. Then from 40 to 1,000. But I noticed, hear me, before those angry people begin to fight to line up, you will hear first. Now we are boarding. Numbers 1 to 40, they know who they are. You see them get up with no hurry. You see them begin to stride towards the carpet. And you can count their number. And they begin to go in. You know what I discovered? After they have sat down and they are caught in drawn, then they tell the multitude, now line up. But one day I got a peek into what happened in that other location. I noticed that while we are fighting to put our luggages on the overhead, these people are already eating, drinking, listening to music. Air hostesses that they are helping them. You know why? Rank. Rank. Beloved in life, those that rank high in real life, then enjoy more perks. Then enjoy more access, more freedom, more power, more influence, more wealth, more limelight, more attention. But those on the lower ranks don't get that. Can we continue? Oh, can we go home now? How do people get up in ranking real life? Political power. Government positions. Success in business. Access to riches and wealth. Innovation and breakthrough. Great talent in sports, show business, movies, music, the academia, research and development, great military career. Beloved, when you see them, you will know that all of us are not on the same level. How many times have you returned from a trip and you are standing in line with one million people to go to approach the counter? But there are people that come in with their own jet, land on the tarmac separate, and their driver come to the plane and drive them away. No immigration officer talk to them. Rank. You are busy thinking the airport is that one you go to all the time. There's another airport you can enter. The only people that enter are those with rank. They drive to their plane. Their pilot take off and they go to where they want to do. rank. I'll give you an illustration with the military. I just shared another one with the real world. Let me bring it home to us. God's kingdom is also structured like the military. That's why we are called soldiers of Christ. 2 Timothy 2. Verses 2 and 3. Share in suffering as a good soldier of Christ Jesus. And because this kingdom is structured like the military. Inside the kingdom of God, beloved. Hear this. I don't think any preacher have told you. There's also ranking. If you're a soldier of Christ. Serving in the army of God. We are all not the same. We are all not the same. There are sheep and there are goats. If it is true that there is ranking in God's kingdom. Then how does God rank us? What is the basis of ranking in the kingdom of God? You will discover it in a few. And throughout this month. Beloved, we are all children of God. There is no doubt about that. We are 
all believers, we dance to the same songs. We lift up holy hands. We read the same Bible. We pray in the name of Jesus. But there is something I don't think any preacher have told you. You need to understand that in this kingdom, we are all not the same rank. God does not expect us to remain on the same rank. As a child of God, you must seek to improve and increase in rank. If not, you'll be moving in circles. I'm going to debunk some things today. All Christians are equal. But some are more equal than the others. I hear people talk about highly anointed man of God. Highly anointed person. Many of us are still praying, Oh Lord, give me more anointing. I want more anointing. Let me put these two things to rest. There is no highly anointed person. And you cannot get more anointed. That is a misplaced prayer. The anointing of God does not increase. Oh, let's define anointing. The anointing is to be set apart. The anointing is to carry the mark of God and say this one belongs to God. The anointing is an identification that says this one has been consecrated to God. There is no scripture anywhere that back up the prayer of more anointing. Because the anointing does not grow. When God anoints you, you are anointed. The anointing is not, is not the same as power. Power can increase. But the anointing cannot. But how can you get power? You can only get power if you increase in rank. Because you attract power according to your rank. Did you hear what I said? If you don't move in the rank where the power you're asking for operates, you cannot get it. As you increase in rank, the power of God will be made available to you. You will also increase in power, not in anoint. So if you're praying that prayer, don't pray it anymore. Pray to increase in rank. If your rank increase. The other day I introduced a young marine second lieutenant. We all stood up and clapped. Hear me. A day is coming in the future. When he walks into this church, he's going to have another man behind him. The day he came, he came alone. That's the rank he operates on. But when he becomes a lieutenant colonel, a colonel in the marine, he will have something called orderly. He will have someone carrying his bag. As he continues, he will have private secretary. As he continues, he will have bodyguards. As he continues, he'll begin to lead teams, brigades, all those. Hear me, beloved. Exactly the same thing happens in the kingdom of God. Who told us that you just come in and just dance and dance away your life and die and go to heaven? Say, oh Lord, oh Lord. I want to increase in rank. Oh Lord, oh Lord. increase my rank. Acts of the Apostles 10, verse 34. I want to show you something. This is the second thing I want you to see. Then Peter began to speak. I now realize how true it is that God does not show favoritism. That's one. Another scripture, Romans 2, 11. Romans 2, 11. For there is no partiality with it, so if it is true that God does not respect persons and if it is true that God 
doesn't show partiality. What does God respect? The only thing God respects, recognizes, and honors is your spiritual rank. Unless you have the rank, you won't attract the respect. Unless you have the rank, you won't get to where you want to go. Beloved, this message is important because it's going to change your life. The kingdom of God is a spiritual kingdom. And in that kingdom, there is a structure. And that structure is ranking structure. Where do you rank? What is your rank? Let me put this in the physical world. As you climb up in rank, you oppress people. But our rank in the kingdom of God is not to oppress each other. We are playing on the same team. Our rank is for functionality. Our rank is for access in the spiritual realm. Our rank is to fulfill God's purpose. Our rank is for our collective victory. Not to show off. But can I tell you something? No one in the kingdom will be able to tell you this is my rank. But you will see what your rank is doing. Did you hear? If you are able to say, <laughs> I remember many, many years ago, about 20 years ago, somebody looked at me in church and I was telling him something that was just very ordinary, normal. We shouldn't fight about it. He said to me, you would understand. I said, why wouldn't he say you are still a baby Christian? I said, okay, thank you, sir. That makes you say, I'm a general. Generals don't say that general. The people around them know that he is the general. Did you hear what I just said? No believer can tell you, here is my rank. I am a colonel or a general. No. But you will be able to see what your rank can purchase. And as you continue to live as a believer, you will begin to see things change. You will begin to see new dimensions accessible to you. Then you will know my rank is changing. The only person that knows your rank is God. Am I communicating? Somebody will ask, what is rank then? Rank is your spiritual authority. Rank is your level of authority in the spiritual realm. The first time we ever hear about rank is John the Baptist telling us about Jesus. He is my cousin. I am older than him. My mother is older than his mother. I mean, in the family, everyone knows me. I'm an older cousin. But guess what? That one, don't look down on him. He's the one I spoke about. He ranks higher than me. Look at it. Who has a higher rank than I? And in the spirit realm, he takes priority over me. Why? He existed before me. The people was not, but <laughs> you were born. No, John was talking about the spiritual realm. Even the apostle Paul tells us that you can be a Christian for 20 years and still remain a baby. And still remain with no rank. It's in your Bible. First Corinthians chapter 3 verses 1 and 2. But I brothers. Could not address you. As spiritual people. But as people of the flesh. As infants in Christ. I fed you with milk. Not solid food. For you were not ready for it. And even now. You are not yet ready. Paul is saying to us that even though they receive Jesus, even though they are believers, they have remained infants, they have remained immature, they have remained freshmen, they have ranked low, they are still not increasing in rank. I pray God will increase your rank. I say God will increase your rank. 
There's a scripture you have always quoted as a believer, but you have never known what it meant. I will explain it to you today. Matthew chapter 6 verse 33. Jesus is speaking. But seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. And all these things will be added to Okay, good. Jesus wasn't talking to unbelievers. He was talking to people in the kingdom. He was talking to his disciples. Seek first the kingdom of God. Jesus was speaking what I'm speaking today. You are in the kingdom, but seek the kingdom. You are in the kingdom, but there is more to be sought. There is so much to discover. There is so much to apprehend in the kingdom. There is so much to unveil. There is so much for you to lay hold of. There is so much for you to know. You need to rise in the kingdom. You don't have to come in and sit down. You have to come in and seek. Let me make you understand it. When they hire you in a company, Let's say a Fortune 500 company. They hire you. You are so excited. You depend on your paycheck to live. Every pay period, at least your bills are paid. But there is something though. If there's anyone that is smart and begins to rise in rank and begins to move from the lower levels to the higher level, and begins to move and move and move and move before you know one day he reaches the highest echelon in the company. There is something that begins to happen. That day is the day they stop spending one penny from their paycheck because they become company property. The moment you arrive at the higher ranks, they give you a company car with a company driver. Before you know what, they relocate you into where the company has the home for our CEO. Before you know, they give you access to the company jet. Before you know, they give you access to sleeping in seven-star hotels. Before you know, you have private gardener, private cook, private security. Wherever you go, governments know that you are coming. Before you know, they pay for your children to study in the best schools. You still make a paycheck, but you don't touch one penny out of it. Guess what? You are not yet talking about retirement. But they give you an escape parachute. They say, it doesn't matter what happens in this company. If it falls, you will not fall. If this company crash, you will get $1 billion. You are the only one secure. No other person. But you used to spend paycheck. But now, you are being taken care of by the company. Bring it to the Bible. Matthew chapter 6, 33. Jesus is saying, grow in rank. Rise in rank. Increase in rank. Get to the top. Everything you are looking for the kingdom will then give you for free. I don't know if you understand. Let me quote it. Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and every other thing will be added unto you. That is what I just described to you in a company. If you can change your ranking level and make it to the top, then you can rub shoulders with other big boys. It's the same in this kingdom. God is saying, you are asking for money. You are asking for this. You are asking for that. Do you know you can get all of them for free? If you will only increase in your rank. We give it to you for free. Because you have become important in the kingdom. Hey. Somebody say, oh Lord, increase my rank. Oh Lord, increase my rank. 
beloved, in the spiritual realm and in this kingdom. It's unfortunate that nobody told us this. But the only thing that matters is your rank. In this kingdom, which is a spiritual kingdom, what is required, verified, authenticated, approved, and respected is your rank. As a matter of fact, your rank is your passport to be able to move freely in the spiritual realm. Demons, devils, spirits, powers, principalities, every, even witches, they don't respect a Christian. They respect rank. That's why witches still drink the blood of somebody that says, I'm a Christian. You are a Christian, but you are a cleaner. You don't have rank. You are a Christian, but I know that thing you are doing better than you. Beloved, open your eyes and ears and hear me. In this kingdom, rank is all that matters. Hear me. The name of Jesus Christ in one person's mouth is not the same in another person's mouth. But it is the same name that they are calling. Why is that? Rank. Pastor E. R. Deboye told a story of for so many years, even as general overseer, he wouldn't go to his village. Until it got to one point, God said, you are there now. But you are going to go differently. Send a message to the village and tell every bad person there that you are coming. If they have eyes, they will see what has happened. He sent a message and said, I am coming to the village this weekend. If you don't want to die, leave the village. When I finish, you can come back. Those that have eye to see looked. And they didn't see the small boy they used to oppress. They saw a man operating on a high rank. He wasn't anointing. He was a rank and power. It was a rank that brought power. That brought authority. That's what you need. If your rank increase, the power you carry will increase. The authority will increase. When you name the name of Jesus, you will see bazookas go out. You will see missiles go out. When you name the name of Jesus, it won't be like before. Rise up on your feet. Pray my father. Increase my rank. My father. Increase my rank. My father, increase my rank. In Jesus, my G name will pray. Don't sit down, your beloved, in the spiritual realm. Nobody cares about your title. Nobody cares about your office. I'm a pastor. I am a worship leader. Put it aside, it doesn't fly in the spiritual realm. I've been a believer 20 years. Forget that. I can pray for one week. Forget that. I can fast two months. Forget that. What is respected in the spiritual realm is your rank. You are addressed according to your rank. You are obeyed according to your rank. Doors open according to your rank. Prayers are answered according to your rank. You have impact according. May God increase your rank. I say may God increase your rank. May God increase your rank. But let me give you an expo. When God was telling me to preach this, he says this is what he wants to do this month in this church. He said, I want to increase the rank of my people. God is my witness. I never knew this. I never knew this phenomenon. I never knew about ranking. The Almighty said, 
in the month of September, I want to increase the rank of my people. When I increase their rank, they will have more impact. They will have more authority. Things will become easier. Things will go easy for them. Beloved, may God fulfill his word in your life. Receive your new rank. May be seated. Beloved, your rank is your clearance level. Your rank determines what you can access in the spiritual dimension. Your rank, your rank determines the doors you can open and the ones you can close. Your rank determines how far you can go in the realms of the spirit. Your rank determines the kind of spirit beings, divine beings that will encounter you or interact with you. Your rank determines your spiritual approval. Beloved, rank is all that matters. I'll use a man to give you an example. There's a man named Abraham. Abraham was a man who understood ranking because he was an idol worshiper before. So he understood that even in the kingdom of darkness, everyone is not on the same level. So when he came into the worship of Jehovah God, he sought to know the big dog. No, when I was an idol worshiper, I got to the level where people... So he said, no. I need to have contact with the living God. When God called him and said, leave your father's house, that was good. He left because he understood. Once you connect with the main guy, things will change. Guess what? It wasn't long. He began to rank high. He began to rank so high that God stopped calling him a believer. He began to rank so high that God stopped calling him just a worshiper. God Almighty himself changed their relationship from relationship of God and servant, from relationship of God and worshiper to God and the friend of God. <laughs> the Almighty himself said, Abraham is not an ordinary man. He has grown in rank. He is now my friend. He's in your Bible. James 2. 23. And the scripture was fulfilled that says, Abraham believed God and it was counted to him as righteousness. And what happened? And he was a of beloved. The friendship got so deep that God said, I cannot do anything without telling my friend Abraham. I'm about to go destroy Sodom and Gomorrah. But I won't want him to hear it outside. It's going to make him mad. And if I don't tell him, I'm going to be destroying the friendship code. I have to. It's in your Bible. Let's read Genesis 17. 17 to 19. The Lord said, Shall I hide from Abraham what I am about to do? Shall I hide? God is saying, this man is so high in rank that I can trust him with secrets. I will not do anything without telling him. Why? Because Abraham is my friend. And because he's my friend, he will surely become great and mighty nation. Beloved, there's great benefits in becoming Somebody of a high rank. When your rank increases, you increase in God. When your rank increases, you grow in grace. When your rank increases, there are certain prayers you won't have to pray anymore. Because before you pray, God already answers it. Look at Sodom. Abraham's nephew was there about to die. Abraham didn't even know how bad it was there. God came to go destroy the place. And Abraham had the opportunity to say, hold on, hold on, hold on. 
You are not like this. Why are we mad this morning? Because I'm not mad. He said, you are mad. I'm not mad. Okay, let's see if you are mad. What if you see 10 people there? God said, if I see 10, I won't destroy the place. Ah, that's what I'm talking about. You're not mad. But don't get mad. I won't get mad, Abraham. What, what if you see eight? I already told you, I will not destroy the place. Don't get mad. Can I say one more? What if you see seven? God already knew where he was going. He was for one person and his family. Lot. Do you know that the standard wasn't met? Yet, the two angels went down and made sure that Abraham's relatives were safe. Away from the place. Hear me? Your increase in rank will benefit your family. Lot did not pray. Lot was already settled and happy in Sodom. But someone that had a higher rank was the one that connected to the God Almighty that he served. And Lot's life was spared. You cannot remain the same. You must increase in rank. Because when you increase in rank, you become the friend of God. When your rank increases, you will be favored by God. When your rank increases, heaven will prefer you. When your rank increases, God will trust you. When your rank increases, you will become one of the chosen custodians of the earth. Before heaven does anything, they ask you. We hear what's going on in Bowie. Can you enlighten us more on what's happening there? Because you have rank. There's one I will sh tell you that will shock you. No man, there's sometimes you. Abraham, I've lived with this woman for so long. I'm looking for baby, no child. Looking for baby, no child. One day they came across a man that looked at his wife and said, I like her. Abraham said, really? You like her? I said, yes. You can have her. What do I get in return? The man said, you get anything you want. Abraham said, yeah. He has my account number. He said to me, at least I didn't divorce her. At least we didn't fight. It was the issues of life. And somebody took her from me. Let me go home and settle and look at some young girl, yo yo. Hear me? Abraham was already content with getting rid of Sarah. Go read your Bible. Abraham didn't come home crying, he didn't come home shouting, something bad has happened. Imagine what the people that were in his circle. Oga, where's mother? Don't worry about her. You won't have to worry about her anymore. She's gone. She's gone. But it's okay. It's okay. God understands. Hear me. Because of rank, God went to the king and said to the king, you are dead. The king said, no, no, no. No, no, no. No, 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 no. Stop playing. How can I die? God said, you took another man. The king said, no. A point of correction. I didn't take any man's wife. The man said she was his sister. Even the woman also said, you know sometimes women you don't know what man has in mind. And you are coming approaching say, when they ask you, say you are my sister. Say you are my sister. Don't. She didn't know Abraham wanted to get rid of her. Let's read the Bible. Is there? Genesis 20. <laughs> From verse 1. Genesis 20 from verse 1. Now Abraham moved south to the Negev and settled between Kadesh and Shur. One day, when visiting the city of Gera, he declared that Sarah was his sister. Then King Abimelech sent for her and had her brought to him at his palace. But that night, God came to King Abimelech in a dream and told him, you are a dead man. 
For that woman you took is my. I didn't know God will care about marital business. But when you have rank, God will care about. But Abimelech hadn't slept with her yet. So he said, Lord, will you slay an innocent man? He told me, she is my sister. And she herself he said, yes, he is my brother. I hadn't the slightest intention of doing anything wrong. This one will shock you. Yes, I know. The Lord replied. But the one, the one I didn't understand, <laughs> I didn't know God is interested in these matters. This is why I held you back from sinning against me. That is why I didn't let you touch her. Beloved, did you see that? If you touch your wife, God let you. <laughs> then God began. Now restore her to her husband. And he will pray for you. But here is where God shook us. For he is a man of rank. For he is what? God didn't have to tell him that. That means he has rank. And you shall live. But if you don't return her to him, you are doomed to death along with all your household. It's in your Bible. But you know the funny thing? That God didn't go to Abraham and say, why did you lie that she was your sister? No. That brings me to this point. When you have rank, God will forgive your mistakes. God will overlook your shortcomings. He will even cover your sins. He never accepted that Abraham made a mistake. He said to the man, if you touch her, you die. Give her back to him. He will pray for you. And again, give him seed. If you want to live, are you still sitting down? Beloved, what your life need now is a higher rank. You need to move from that door into the inner court. You need to move deeper. You need to move higher. You need to wear a rank in the spirit that the Almighty will honor. That spirits will honor. You're still worried about the powers of your father's house. When your rank increases, all of them will begin to fear you. They don't fear the name of your church. You know, when we were growing up, they said, if you want to stop witches from attacking you, take Bible and put under your pillow. And put your head on it. Then you are safe. Hear me? When they come now, they will take your Bible, put it on the side. Then they will suck the blood finish sucking the blood. Then they will open the Bible and show you where you should have read. <laughs> Pray. My father, increase my rank in the name of Jesus. In Jesus, my genome will pray. Sit down, I have six minutes. Beloved, when your rank increases, you won't have to go to God. God will come looking for you. Read your Bible. Before Adam lost his rank, God will come from heaven to the garden to hang with Adam. Read your Bible. Genesis chapter 18. Abraham was sitting in front of his tent. The Almighty himself came from heaven to the earth. Looking for Abraham. Abraham didn't look for him. And because of rank, Abraham played host to God. And God sat down and ate food with Abraham. You don't know that God liked steak. Barbecued meat. 
pepper soup. That's what Sarah could go. That's why I like steak and pepper soup. Because that's why my God like. I don't like chicken. I like <laughs> handoba. <laughs> Amen. It's in your Bible. Let's read Genesis 18. 1 to 5. And the Lord appeared to him by the oaks of Mamre. As he sat at the door of his tent in the heat of the day, he lifted up his eyes and looked, and behold, three men were standing in front of him. Why in front of him? When he saw them, he ran from the door, from the tent door to meet them, and bowed himself to the earth. Look at, and he said, Abraham was a man of rank, so he knew who was there. Oh Lord, if I have found favor in your sight, do not pass by your servant. Let a little water be brought and wash your feet and rest yourself under the tree while I bring a morsel of bread that you may refresh yourselves. And after that, you may pass on since you have come to your servant. What did they say? So they said, do as you have. Abraham didn't look for him. He came to Abraham. Beloved, rank. Rank. When your rank increases, God will visit you. When your rank increases, God will reveal himself in a form you can relate. When your rank increases, God will keep your company. When God, when your rank increases, God will grant your requests. When your rank increases, things will begin to happen in ways that even you will not understand. When your rank increases, the good things you are chasing will begin to chase you. Remember the CEO. It's in your Bible. Matthew 6, 33. Seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all other things will be added unto you. Beloved, the reason you must increase in rank is that with a lower rank in this kingdom, your impact will not be seen. With a lower rank in this kingdom, you will fight the same battles every day. With a lower rank in this kingdom, what is yours will be deprived you. With a lower rank in this kingdom, you will not experience the fullness of God. With a lower rank in this kingdom, you will become a footmat, even though you are a Christian. With a lower rank in this kingdom, demons and devils will keep oppressing you, tormenting you. You will ask me, how do I increase in rank? Using Abraham, I'll give you five things that you must observe or do to increase in rank. One, follow God. Do not look back or return to where you came from. Leave your father's house to a land that will show you. That was the instruction. He never returned back. He kept going, trusting God to lead him. Do the same. You will increase in rank. Because one thing that makes rank increase is obedience. When God says it, believe it, do it. He will approve you too. Trust God enough. To be willing to sacrifice your Isaac. Trust God enough to be willing to sacrifice your best. Three, trust God as your source. When Abraham went to war, the king of Sodom said, oh, just take everything that we got. Abraham said, no, 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 no. I'm not going to take nothing from you. Else it will be said that Abraham was blessed by the king of Sodom. I know my source. Beloved, who is your source? Let God be your source. Trust him and you will increase in rank. Again, beloved, there are so many people that are in church now, but their leg is here. That leg is here. One man, that foolish man that sang uh, local music in my place said, he goes to church and he also serves idol. He said the reason he serves idol is that he wants to be eating goat meat and chicken. 
Because you know in the idol kingdom, they sacrifice to idol. So there's plenty goats and chicken sacrifice. But he said, the only reason I go to church is that I know there's heaven and I want to make heaven. But can I tell you something? We don't need to be in the other side to eat chicken. We don't need to be in the kingdom of darkness to eat goat meat. If you want one goat all by yourself, just live here now, you can buy it. So that one has been taken care of. Why don't you throw in your eggs in this one basket of God? If I perish, I I rather perish with God than succeed with Satan. Be all in and your rank will be increasing. Lastly, get ready to be tested. Because what cannot be tested cannot be trusted. Get ready to be tested. God will test you. If you pass, you will move up. Just in the military, like in the military, when it's promotion time, they go for training. They take an exam. And when they pass, they promote. The problem is that many of us haven't taken any exam. We are busy, excited. Praising the Lord all day. Rise upon you.